got the dressing. Yep. Atlanta businessman Mark Venega had long made health and fitness a priority. At age 45, I was getting ready to bicycle across the United States, you know, so I was jumping rope for 45 minutes a night, and um, I was in excellent shape. And then he went to the doctor for a routine physical. He's poking around my neck, and he goes, oh, Mark, well, what's this? I said, it feels like a golf ball. So I go to this surgeon, and he says, oh, you've got uh, cancer, and you got to get this out right away. And but you had no symptoms? None. So what goes through your mind when somebody says you've got cancer? He's wrong. But the doctor wasn't wrong. Mark's diagnosis, medullary thyroid cancer, rare and deadly. No question he needed surgery right away. But the issue for him and his wife, Kathy, was then what? When he goes through oh, radiation and chemo and just a laundry list of stuff. And so I ask him, so after somebody goes through all that, how many survive? He said zero. He didn't blink an eye, didn't like pause or hesitate, zero. The year was 2001, and Mark Benega faced a very tough fight. I went into research mode, and because that's how I know how to approach things. And you start finding pockets of, of expertise around the world, and you kind of go after those pockets of expertise because there's nothing else to do. So far, Mark Benega has tried more than a dozen different treatments, clinical trials, even a vaccine in the Bahamas. But every single time, his disease has come back. His experience of setbacks and then hopes and then more setbacks is very much like this country's war on cancer. 43 years ago, when President Nixon signed the National Cancer Act, victory seemed in sight. Everything that can be done by government, everything that can be done by voluntary agencies in this great, powerful, rich country now will be done. When the bill was signed in 1971, there were actually congressmen who were predicting that there would be an end to cancer by the bicentennial in 1976. But we haven't even come close, says the American Cancer Society's chief medical officer, Dr. Otis Brawley. Almost 600,000 people died of cancer in this country just last year. Cancer is the number two killer of people in the United States, only outranked by cardiovascular disease. Over the next decade or so, we project that cancer will become the number one killer as cardiovascular disease uh, deaths go down. And it was the number one killer in 1971, right? Cancer was the number one killer in 1971. There is some good news. Since 1991, breast cancer deaths are down 35%. So are deaths from colorectal cancer. But thanks largely to better screening, not to any miracle cure. Dr. Brawley says the biggest promise now is so-called personalized care, where treatments are specifically tailored for each individual. It's based on the finding that the genetic mutations causing cancer vary from patient to patient we can actually find what we call targets. If I have a target and I have a drug that hits that target, then I'm cooking with gas. After exhausting every other avenue, that's what Mark and Kathy Benega are betting on now. Do you feel like because this is personalized that you have a better shot at beating this? Yes, I do. There's, there's no doubt in my mind. Hey, hey big guy, how you doing? I'm doing good in yourself. <laughs> and they found a very oh, unconventional sweet. partner in their fight. Is Mark's the first personalized fly that you built? To my knowledge, Mark's fly is the first personalized fly that has ever been built. And you wanted to see your fly. Oh, you I see? do. Absolutely. You got it. Ross Kagan is not a cancer doctor. He is a fruit fly geneticist. He and his team have started doing something that seems like science fiction creating a genetic copy of a patient's tumor in a fruit fly, apparently a very intricate little critter. Using the flies, they then test thousands of drug combinations until they find a cocktail 
that works. This is, uh, has been called revolutionary. What's revolutionary about it? So what's different is we're obsessing over how to make the model. We make the model as close to Mark as we can. And then we don't have any bias on what drug we throw on it. We take a large set of FDA approved drugs. We throw them all, they're not even all cancer drugs, and we throw them all at the fly. We don't really care what's driving the tumor, we just care what stops it. So what have we here? So what we have here are two flies. And as you're gonna see on the right, in normal size, nice, happy, bright red eye. Can you yeah. see that? Yep. Now look at the fly to the left, is the tumor eye, and that has cancer-causing genes directed just in the eye. That fly is the Mark fly, named after Mark Beniga. So this fly has Mark's tumor. That's right, and it's even more Mark because Mark has other issues. For example, he's diabetic. You have produced a diabetic fruit fly with Mark's tumor. Correct. A fruit fly is the size of a period at the end of a sentence, <laughs> if that. How is this possible? We have very powerful microscopes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Mark Beniga inspired Ross Kagan and his team to open up the Center for Personalized Cancer Therapeutics at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. What is it like for you personally to have gone from pretty much strictly lab stuff uh -huh. to, you know, dealing with a person like this? Mark really forced me out of my comfort zone, so it has changed my career. It's changed your life. It has. <laughs> Along the way, patient and scientist also have become fast friends. This is the first time I think you've seen the actual flies. Patient and fly are still getting acquainted. Oh, I moved his leg. He's waving to me. <laughs> Incredible. Kagan's pioneering research already has led to a three-drug cocktail that knocked the cancer out in the Mark fly. Next question, will it do the same in Mark? We were with him for his first round of treatment. This is his best hope, right? This is his best hope. At the moment, this is probably his only hope. Mark has become resistant to all standard of care. I'm not aware of another option that Mark has. A few weeks along, and the new drug cocktail is showing early signs of promise. And at age 57, 13 years after his diagnosis, Mark Beniga says he has still got a lot of fight left. You have to feel like what you've done is bound to help other people. It's bound to. And how, do, how does that make you feel? I hope they cure cancer, you know, tomorrow. I mean, I hope this process is so devastating to cancer that, you know, Ross is going to have people knocking on his door saying, oh, you know, we'd like to get this done too. And how do we do it? That would be great. That would be great. I hope that happens. The quicker the better. <laughs> yeah.